Balaki, where's Balaki at? My name's Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balaki? I'm for real. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is here, everyone. Thank you for joining me uh, for a little bit more SPTV Late Night Edition. It's been a very, very busy night over here in SPTV land. But uh, we are going to wrap up the evening with uh, Double the Beard and SPTV's official left tackle, my lawyer friend and your lawyer friend, Zach. <laughs> I like it. I'm going to adopt that as my own. Oh, I thought you would like that. I do. I like um, it. We are going to talk a little bit about David Miscavige. Uh, cool. We're going to talk about his team basically being warned by the judge in Leah Remini's lawsuit yesterday. And we're going to talk, well, a little bit about the hearing that's happening tomorrow with uh, in Jane Doe One's lawsuit against David Miscavige. Exact same attorneys for the plaintiffs. Almost the exact same attorneys for the defendants. Um, and this is going to be fun. Before we get started, I want to I want to slightly uh, correct and add to something that I said in uh, uh, today's earlier video about this subject. So uh, uh, first, I'll just add something. The uh, An almost exact quote from the judge in Leah Remini's lawsuit against David Miscavige in Scientology was, David Miscavige is going to be served. He is going to have to show up in this courtroom. And he is going to have to defend himself. That was that was an almost exact quote from the judge. That that is pretty strong. That is pretty strong. The thing I wanted to correct from the earlier video is that I, I had said that um, uh, the, uh, the conversation about David Miscavige was was postponed for another seven days. It, here's here was the actual truth of the matter. The hearing yesterday was not about David Miscavige. The judge simply saw that in seven days. There is a hearing on his calendar about this subject of David Miscavige being served. And that is why he said, uh, are you really going to make me do this on Valentine's Day? Are you really going to come in here and make this argument that he still hasn't been served and that he shouldn't be served through publication? Are you really going to do that? So he was actually – he was just commenting on a future hearing that he saw that was on the books. The reason why that's important is because yesterday's hearing in Leah Remini's lawsuit was not about – uh, David Miscavige's service issue. David Miscavige's attorney actually was not in court yesterday. And yet, tomorrow there is a hearing in Jane Doe One's lawsuit against David Miscavige in a courtroom directly next door to the courtroom that yesterday's hearing was in. And David Miscavige's attorney, Jeffrey Riffer, is going to be personally showing up in court for the first time in years, uh, to my knowledge, to have, um, to have pretty much the exact same hearing that we are going to have in another seven days on February 14th in the other courtroom. Anyway, it, it, I don't know. I just find all this quite humorous. But you wanted to specifically comment on what, wh wh what are these sanctions potentially that the judge seemed to imply could be coming Miscavige's way or, 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 or to the way of his attorneys if they keep acting a fool on this issue of service? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the judge has basically warned, listen, you're going to play by the rules or you will be sanctioned. It's not I'm, I, I'm thinking about it. It's you will. You have one opportunity to serve him or to you know produce him and, and get his consent to be served or deemed served. Essentially, it's called a waiver of service. If you don't, you get to pay the probably tens of thousands of dollars. Leah Remini's team has paid, I don't know, 15 process servers for 5000 hours of time and mileage and fuel and everything else at this point not that and it's not about the sum of money it's the indicator that the money has to be paid right as, as you mentioned it could be 10 million dollars it's it's chump change to to the organization but what they can also what the judge can also do is he can make david miscavige pay that money personally i don't want your lawyers to pay it i don't want the organization to pay it i want you to pay it and you david miscavige have to show me the court proof bank statements <laughs> Uh, credit card statements, whatever. Now, ultimately, if the church wants to pay him back or something, that's obviously within you know his compensation or whatever. He could certainly do that. But the judge may say you have to, it has to hurt you just a little bit. You have to show me that you paid it. And by the way, if I also see that there was a transfer for that same amount of money two days before you paid it, that's not you paying it, right? Um, and, and the sanctions in theory could go all the way up to a default. Now, they, he's not going to be defaulted for failure to participate in the service game. But what that means is 
the judges said you will be served either the easy way or the hard way. I think in, in my uh, text to you today, I said, put up or shut up, right? <laughs> so we can do it the easy way or the hard way. If you choose the hard way and I have to sanction you, if you continue to play the hard way, the sanctions throughout this process will get increasingly worse. In a worst case scenario, we saw in the Alex Jones case, he basically said, I'm not going to follow the rules. And the judge said, fine, you lose. The jury gets to determine how much you have to pay. Right. Right, and, right, right. And, and the, you know, he gets sanctioned for this and then he gets sanctioned for that. And in a year and a half, he gets sanctioned for that. They build and judges don't forget. Judges don't like giving sanctions. Judges want people to play by the rules and judges have a, a lot of le a lot of discretion and, and, and broad authority on what there's and, and, and uh, on what their sanctions are. Very interesting. You know, I want to ask a question. I feel like I've asked it a million times. I can never quite remember the answer. And, and plus, you know. Every every video is being watched sometimes by people who've never watched our videos before. So what is the risk to a, a defense team for absolutely pissing off a judge by acting like clowns, e even if it's because their client is a clown and is demanding they behave this way? What is the risk, if any, to the actual defense team, even if it's reputationally in future yeah. cases before the judge, like what, what are your thoughts? Yeah. So it's, it's sort of multifaceted. Uh, one, it, you could get an adverse instruction. And what I mean by that is the jury could be told David Miscavige refused to participate in discovery. You are therefore uh, ordered to, as a matter of law, determine that any evidence he would have produced would have been damning or harming to him and his organizations. Uh, and you take that far enough, that becomes a default. Uh, it can also, if they ref if the lawyers engage in bad faith or otherwise refuse to, in good faith, attempt to participate in the process, even if they have an obstinate client, they could be facing attorney discipline through the bar or however California disciplined its lawyers. They could be putting their professional, their, their abilities to uh, exercise their profession at risk as well. Um, and you know, all and this is a cash. These clients, the organizations that David Miscavige are cash cows for these people. They're making millions of dollars every year representing these clients. So it's at some point you have to stand up and say, I'm not going to put my license at risk because you're an idiot. Right. And if they don't, I mean, if they dig their heels in, they they're looking at reputational harm. So they're going to lose potentially clients they would have gotten in the future. They're looking at monetary sanctions. They could be looking at professional disciplinary sanctions. Um, and then, you know, adverse jury instructions where the jury is told as a matter of law, David Miscavige did the bad thing. Now you have to determine how much he has to pay or he for refused to participate in discovery. So any evidence that he puts on can only be viewed in the light most harmful to him, not in the light most favorable to him interesting uh because <laughs> there was one anecdote I, I didn't forward from the hearing yesterday which was uh like the judge was putting on like a stand-up comedy show like he he saw that there was this hearing uh coming up in seven days regarding this m m like mo what is it it actually says a declaration of jeffrey k riffer in support of reply to specially appearing defendant David Miscavige's motion to quash service of summons and complaint. Okay, so the judge saw that this hearing was on the books, and he said, um, you know, to his staff there, he goes, you know, I, I've seen all these filings. I, ha I haven't read them all, but let me guess. He goes, let, let me guess. I haven't read them. Let me guess. I'm going to tell you. I'm looking at my crystal ball. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to guess what's in these motions. And then he basically went, I'm going to guess that the, the plaintiff's team did this and this and this and this and this and that the, and that the defense team is going to going to claim this. Did I get it right? And and when the person is like, yes, your honor, he's like, I did. I did. I guessed it right. Wow, that's amazing. Like he's he's literally he's literally making fun of and laughing at the defense team and the motions and the filings. And, and he said, in all of my years on the bench, I have never seen a defense team, uh, in, in addition to trying to quash this, uh, you know, whatever they're trying to quash, uh, addition, in addition, try to argue that their client should not be allowed to be um, serviced via publication. And I just feel like that when a judge is insulting you and laughing at you, you've made some bad choices. Exactly. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and part of that is designed, I think, to play on the egos of the attorneys. Nobody wants to stand there and be embarrassed in front of their colleagues. I mean, not that this case is anything to hang your hat on if you're the defense team, but those other lawyers that are in the courtroom in the hallway who can hear this thing going on, those are your peers. And it's embarrassing to be called down either directly or even sometimes worse, passively aggressive, passive aggressively like this judge did. That's humiliating. And so pay, playing on the egos and the the energies of the attorney sometimes can fix that problem as well. Like, listen. 
I went to court today and I got embarrassed because you're an idiot. You're a clown. I will not, that will not happen again. It's kind of like being a parent, right? You have embarrassed me once. You will not embarrass me again. This will not happen again. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine the lawyers will dry their tears with the checks they're cashing from RTC and David Miscavige, but it, it does have to be humiliating. Uh, let's see. Lizzie B says, love your channel, Aaron. Yes. Pissing off a judge is very bad for Miscavige. Judge allows what evidence the jury sees who and what they can testify about and overrule and sustaining power for objections. Judge mad, bad. <laughs> I, I, Do you agree? Yeah, I, I agree. That? That's a pretty concise statement. All right. Kendall Links said, did you show up, David Miscavige's attorneys? This proves David Miscavige has been served. Okay. So this is a, this is a legal point. You want to explain this one? Sure. So I actually get this quite a bit. Um, so, it, so in, in Aaron, a few minutes ago, just read the title of the document and it says appear in, in, appearing specially. There are two types of appearances. You can have a general entry of appearance or general appearance and a special appearance. A special appearance says we are not here because our client has been served. We're here for some other issue related to that, but he has not yet been served. So you're not consenting to the general jurisdiction of the court you're only appearing in a limited capacity to adjudicate or argue or, pre or uh, present one very narrow specific issue and that's it that makes sense and actually you just reminded me to, to to clarify something i said earlier uh when the judge said david miscavige will be served he did seem to actually carve out a possibility that come seven days from now uh miscavige's team may be able to argue some particular technicality that will prevent the judge from ruling uh, on the 14th that he's already been served. But his point is, it doesn't matter how long this takes or how you do this dance. He is going to be served even not, even even if not by the 14th. So exactly. And that I think that was the second provision. I'm going to give you a chance to do the right thing. But if you can't, then I, you know, Leah's attorneys can and should, which is weird. Normally judges don't tell other attorneys what to do, but I can understand the and appreciate the judge's frustration. Um, a file a motion that within 20 days, uh, you know, he has to either appear or they can serve him through publication. And in order to serve some, they literally run a notice in the, in the, in the newspaper, dear David Miscavige, if you're reading this, you've been served. Even if you're not, you've still been served anyway. Right. And it's an alternative means of service. Courts don't love to do that, but in, in, in order to satisfy the burden to show we've done everything we can do, I don't know what else Leah's process servers can do. There's a, there's a stack of records this deep with full color photographs and $10,000 worth of mileage and, and time. They've tried everywhere. Well, he doesn't live here. Where does he live? We don't know. Well, we're going to serve you anyway, and I'm going to serve the other door, and I'm going to serve the place across the street and a place across the town, right? So they have exhausted all, and what you have to do is you have to show that you exhausted all reasonable avenues of personal service. That's I can't right. think in my mind of anything else they could do to try and directly serve him or his agent or agents, plural. And once the judge is satisfied that Leah's attorneys have done everything they could do, they'll allow him to be served by publication in the newspaper. The reason that exists is one, maybe, you know, somebody is deceased. So we have to serve their estate through the newspaper and you give notice, but also it's, it, it's to prevent people from doing exactly what he's doing and just hiding behind doors and refusing to answer the door. You still have to answer for your wrongs. That's right. And to anyone who just might be newly tuning into this, this, this entire issue, I mean, uh, Leah's team has even showed that the last time David Miscavige got a speeding ticket, the address on his driver's license was the address that they've attempted service at many times. And it's the exact same address that is the legal address for the corporation, RTC, Religious Technology Center, that David Miscavige is the head of. I mean, all of Scientology knows David Miscavige is the chairman of the board of RTC. Like, it's just become so uh, comical and ridiculous. And for those who may not have caught the video earlier today explaining this, the judge specifically told Leah Remini's uh, legal team to serve Miscavige's lawyer, the one who has filed this motion, uh, Jeffrey Riffer, uh, and to, to serve him and give him 20 days to have Miscavige sign off that he's accepted service uh, or, or else he, it, it sounded like he was going to say, or else he, he's going to make Miscavige pay for the expense of jumping through all these hoops. Um, and, and and that that's that's where... Uh, that's where Zach's commentary entered in earlier in this video, that, that that he could make David Miscavige personally pay that expense. And it's just kind of humiliating, right? It, it, 
it would be humiliating to David Miscavige. That, that's why I almost hope it goes that route. Right. In theory, except, you know, he's he's a, a, a soulless, you know, a fake admiral, right? Uh, Captain, a little Captain Davy of the fake Space Navy, I think is your phrase. I don't know at this point that he can be embarrassed because whether it's if it's designed to you know humiliate people, but if people can't be humiliated, it doesn't work. And he does stuff every day that would humiliate a normal person. The way he treats those around him, that's humiliating behavior by an adult. And it doesn't seem to bother him, but there's only so much the judge can do, though. That's a really good point. I mean, the the media, the, uh, the mainstream media has been talking about this guy's wife having been missing for the last 17 years, and that has not humiliated him enough to at least let her appear in a little promotional video in the background, like just walking by or or something. So it's true. I mean, he might be totally impervious to humiliation. Uh, Dan Muscata says, this is a big virtual hug to both of you. That's very nice, Dan. Appreciate you, Dan. Thank you for that. Uh, Dave Owens asks, does a judge review a lawyer's record before a trial? Um, not in my experience. In fact, in most cases, a lawyer's record is not actually public. Now, if they've been publicly reprimanded, a record of the reprimand would be there. But as far as like their bar discipline file, that's not generally public record. So unless something's different in California, and even if it was public, that's not something a judge would probably bother him or herself with. Because the fact that a lawyer made a bad decision 10 years ago doesn't mean that they're going to make that same bad decision in this case today. That is very true. Uh, I forgot to bring your YouTube channel up oh, earlier. Too. So <laughs> before we sign off, I'm going to bring that up. Uh, guys, if you're watching live right now, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Uh, it is fast. It is easy. It is free, you guys. It does actually help. Um, and if I can get this pulled up here, my God, so many clicks, so many clicks. Boom! If you're not yet subscribed to my lawyer friend, Zach's channel, he's my lawyer friend. He can be your lawyer friend, too. <laughs> I love saying that. And I, and I want to <laughs> give a big thanks to uh, to your, your 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 supporters when you had your uh, your um, interaction, shall we say, with uh, uh, the Hollywood Division's Finest uh, a, a few weeks ago. I got a ton of emails and uh, people trying to contact me through uh, YouTube saying, Aaron's in trouble. Can you help him? And my response was, I can't help him from where I'm located, but I'll do a, I'll do a stream. And I had some of my mods and some of my uh, folks working in the background to figure out where you were and what your status was. We're, we're, we're working other streams. And so uh, I got a lot of good feedback from them. Hey, I appreciate you coming on and keeping us calm and letting us know Aaron's not getting his butt whooped in a jail somewhere. And ultimately, you came out the winner in that deal. So uh, I would just want to give a big thanks. I haven't had a chance to address some of those folks yet, but a big thanks to your to your supporters for uh, for coming to me when you were found yourself between a rock and a hard place. That's awesome. And and thank you as well. Uh, let's see if a, a few last minute um, ones here, Joe Cooter, are publications required to run these notices, putting a notice in freedom magazine would be hilarious. So Freedom Magazine would, of course, not be required to publish it. There are what are called uh, uh, publications of record in, in by they basically they are they are required by being on, on this list of official publications. They're required to carry legal notices. And the, the L.A. And, Times is the L.A. Times is probably the, the biggest one. Uh, but, you know, you go to the courthouse and most most of those newspapers have a basket or a drop box or an email address you send it to. And then they just publish it just regularly in the legal notice section. Got it. Jen Nelson. Hi, guys. Hope all is well. Zach, how is thing one and thing two? Right now, thing, things one and two are in bed, so let's hope they stay that way. <laughs> all right, guys. Just a, a relatively brief one this evening. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Thank you, as always, to everyone who watches. Until the very end, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe.